him again live. Okay, maybe it'll stay connected now. Am I live? Can I get a 5x5? Five five? Looks like some people are showing up to the live stream here. Just leaving the neighborhood. Five five, not five by five. Huh, somebody said it's buffering, but the audio is working. Somebody said I can apply for unemployment. I don't think so because I'm a business owner and I'm not unemployed. I just don't have any sales right now. So I'm just running to the store. I'm making a uh, making a turkey because I make a turkey for about 20 bucks, and uh, that'll last you the whole week. So that's what I'm doing right now, but. Oh, let's see, somebody said, yes, I can uh, apply for unemployment. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll have to check that out. So anyway, I just got a call from John D. Wells. I can't say not to say anything about it or not. But uh, he was called. He was kind of concerned for me, and he wanted to check in with me, say hi, talk to me about a couple things. But he told me that his wife had a dream that uh, that my dog got poisoned and somebody killed me, and he was just concerned about me. So he gave me a call. I thought, wow, that's that's amazing because. I'm pretty sure my dog did get poisoned. He's been sick for the last four days. He's getting a little better right now. And as far as somebody trying to kill me, uh, that's that's come really close to happening several times over the last few years. Uh, one time when my daughter was in the car. Uh, so that kind of stuff doesn't really scare me anymore. I've got past that point a few years ago I'll, I remember the day it happened when I decided you know what I'm not gonna live in fear anymore it wasn't like a conscious choice it just happened just all right not doing this anymore Just run into the store here, get a couple things I need. It's always interesting when I go to the store. There's been uh, a lot of gang stalking still going on. Yesterday when I got home, there was a guy literally standing. I live, I live way back in the neighborhood. And there was a guy literally standing in the middle of the street. It looked like he was talking to himself he was on his, uh, his little earpiece. But he was standing in the middle of the street, exactly where I pull forward to back into my garage and just stood there and was just staring at me. Like, what? What? Looking at me like I'm, I'm the weirdo when this guy's standing in the middle of the street talking on the phone. And then I told him, I was like, hey, get, get the fuck out of the way, man. What are you doing? He was like, oh, just on my phone. I got a little arthritis here. He's got his... He's got his leg boot on, the, the leg cast, the typical gang stalker 
uh, tire. They've always got their arm in a sling or a walking boot on. Uh, you know, to use as like a uh, some type of threat. And uh, that th those of you that go through the same thing that I do, you, you completely understand what I'm talking about. That the amount of people that you run into have a, uh, a leg brace or their arm in a cast is statistically impossible unless everybody around you just happens to be riding in a rodeo. Uh, it's ridiculous. Somebody just asked me on here what, um, how long I've been targeted. I realized that I was targeted. The targeting went overt. Uh, well, I realized that it had gone overt in April of 2017. And then I realized that it had been going on longer than that. My house being destroyed. So people that just happened to be sitting in their car, like they're camping out in their car, right when I pulled up, they all got out, got on their phone. There's uh, five, six of them walking in the store right now. I'm sure we'll run into these people when I go in there. So, but I've got my little list of things that I need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in the store. And I'll take you guys on a tour of the store right now. So you can see what it looks like during a pandemic apocalypse. See this dude on his bicycle over here? I don't know if you can see him. He was, uh, he was just sitting on the corner of my neighborhood when I went, uh, when I left the neighborhood. Just hanging out, and then as I get to the uh, as I get to the store, he shows up at the uh, at the front of the store with me. I noticed when uh, a lot of people. How you doing? Awesome. We got the cart crew cleaning all the carts for everybody. Appreciate it. Okay, so here we are in Fry's grocery store. All right, looks like they've restocked some of the stuff. Let's say they some produce. Plenty of produce. They got the bananas back. That's good. All right, here. What do I need? So I'm making a turkey and. Uh, Get on uh, Gordon Ramsay. He's a chef, a famous chef, and uh, he's got a bunch of cooking videos on YouTube. And uh, they're pretty good. He's got a good one to make turkeys, and it's only like 10 minutes long. It tells you everything you need. I, I tried this one one time. It turned out really good. Parsley, here we go. Italian parsley. Alright, get some of that. Alright, this is kind of tough to do. I need one of those uh, like necklace camera holders. Sorry. Somebody asked if, they, if uh, anybody in the chat room knows anybody that's been personally affected by coronavirus. I don't. I don't know anybody.
Yeah, you guys go ahead and talk amongst yourselves, I guess, while I'm multitasking here. All right, so parsley, garlic, onions, bay leaves, garlic. Where's the garlic? Maybe it'd be good to keep away vampires, too. Huh? Oh, here's some. Get one clove of garlic. Be frugal here. Uh, somebody here said coronavirus doesn't exist other than the concept. I think it's actually a, a virus that was created in a lab. Uh, they create the antidote for the virus at the same time at the same lab. It's a uh, bio biological warfare. When I was in the Air Force, I was a part of a team called Bernie, and it's chemical, biological, radioactive, nuclear, and explosive. And it's uh, we're training in how to identify different, different things like that, and how to disinfect and stuff like that. Hold on one second. Do you, do you guys have bay leaves? What's that? You check in the back. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to check in the back. I'll just figure if you, you might know if there's some up here. I don't think it's too important. No. Uh, sure. Yeah, I think I can live without them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Over that one? Oh, okay. I'll go check it out. All right, bay leaves. Bay leaves, bay leaves. I, I asked the guy. It was stalking all this stuff. Stalking <laughs> all this stuff. He said to go check over here. Hmm. I don't. I don't see any sage, thyme, rosemary, mint. Nope. Parsley. Man, I, I never thought in a million years that I'd be on a, uh, a live stream while I'm at the grocery store looking for. Looking for products, talking to people, and have uh, too many people on live stream. You're good, buddy. Okay, so. Oh, Savoyas. All right, so. Uh, making a turkey, what should I get? Yellow onions or. Or white onions. Anybody a chef out there? I'll just go ahead and get a couple of yellow ones. Yellow or red? Okay. Good looking out. Hmm. What's the difference between yellow and red other than the color? Get two yellow ones here. So now I've noticed over the last couple of years, as I'm documenting the uh, the organized harassment that I that I received, when I turn my camera on, it really slows down. Or the people will be uh, keeping an eye on me, but they won't approach me and pull their little street theater skits. That, uh, that they normally do, they'll, they'll stay pretty good distance. So, oh, look, they got bread, all right. The shelves are starting to look normal again so far. Let's see, I don't know what the rest of the, uh, the shelves look like in here. This place was decimated the other day, uh, but it looks like they have, um, Just have everything restocked. This whole bread aisle was, everything was completely on the other day. Yeah, it looks like they've got it mostly re restocked. They've got some uh, hamburger and hot dog buns. That's a people can barbecue a little bit.
Uh, but this place was packed. It looked like, so when I lived in Oklahoma, they would have ice storms. And whenever the people uh, learned that there were, there was going to be an ice storm coming up, they would go to the grocery store and just clear out because then they, they wouldn't be able to, uh, to travel on the roads for, I don't know, four or five days, something like that. But they would, it would look like this, quote, pandemic situation. Uh, but this store, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Everything was gone. All the tortillas were, oh, look, they got tortillas. They got the, uh, the local brand. This is probably actually good for a few local businesses, a few, um, like a little pandaria, bread store, or a uh, torteria. It'd probably be good for them because they don't have to uh, send their stuff across state lines. They can just get it to the local store. So that's probably a good thing. I did my blinker. Just got people jumping in front of me. Uh, Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll check some of these messages out while I'm here. Uh, let's see. Michael, don't take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. It has been found to make symptoms worse. I don't take anything. I don't take anything at all. To eat food, drink water. There's no medications that I take. Nothing. Oh yeah, they got all the spaghetti sauce back in. Looks like the trucker's been working overtime. Good on the truckers. Right on. All the top ramen's still gone. They got all the soup. Soup back in. Hmm, I wonder if they got sugar and eggs. Let's see. Sugar. All right. I mean, this store is almost back to normal. These shelves were almost completely empty. All right. I need olive oil for two reasons. Damn, olive oil is expensive. So I need some olive oil for the turkey. And, and actually, somebody that I admire and listen to and trust more than a lot of other people, that have, uh, somebody that has uh, a lot more faith in God than I do, I have to, have to admit it. I question probably more than I should. Should just have a little more faith, but um, somebody told me to put olive oil above the uh, the doors and windows in the house, and that would help ward off basically evil spirits, demons, um, and uh, I don't I don't know. I might just go ahead and do it. And as long as I'm getting hit, somebody here. Okay. Right here, somebody says, yes, it does. All right, hold on. I get sidetracked. I'm going to check out my, my list here. I'm a bacon. Who would have thought you need bacon to cook a turkey? Let's see. Oh, oh okay. Nope, eggs. Eggs are still in high demand, I guess. But, oh, it looks like there's still some butter. I get a little a little leery when there's only one left of something in the, uh, in the aisle there. Oh, I left that door open. 
bad. Make a turducken. <laughs> Isn't that a uh, duck stuffed inside turkey? Sage and salt, okay. Mikey Bizzle for Shizzle says, uh, says I was dealing with sleep paralysis and anointed uh, anointed stuff after it, and it worked. Interesting. Only time I've experienced uh, sleep paralysis is when I was at McGee Tyson Air Force Base going through Airman Leadership School. And I, I woke up, well, I thought, I, thought I, I'm pretty sure I was awake. I woke up and I was completely paralyzed, couldn't. Couldn't uh, move my body. Uh, but that's the only time that I've experienced that. That was pretty interesting. Okay, I think I got everything that I need here. Sleep paralysis is associated with uh, demonic forces. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I don't know what the whole thing is about. I mean, I always, I always try to be objective about it and try to think about technology and how uh, how they can communicate with the uh, with the brain and do things synthetically. So, but I'm open to all, all options, all possibilities. And, uh, you know, just, like I said, just stay objective. Uh, let's see. Justice League 2AF says uh, Trump. Our said $1,200 plus to eat American. Hmm. Are you are you referring to the uh, the twelve hundred dollars check that we're supposed to get that won't help really many people? Uh, imagine a person that owns like a bar and grill. Like say there's a there's a place up here, uh, Pub Ninety Nine, I think it's called. It's just a little mom and pop bar and grill. It's their only location, I think, and they probably need to make. Ten thousand dollars a week in order to keep their employees to purchase all their food to pay their rent the rent's probably twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a month um, just to stay in business so imagine that that bar and grill shutting down for a month and then getting a check for twelve hundred dollars there's no way that they'll be able to to stay in business unless they've unless they have you know fifty sixty thousand dollars put in the bank which a lot of people don't because they've been struggling to get by for so long oh all right hold on i'm gonna check out here oh maybe not she left i'm doing a live stream how you doing buddy doing all right what's that Oh, awesome. The cashier went to go wash her hands. That's good preventative maintenance. Uh, looks like most everything made it back on the shelves. Looking good in here. Yes, it's not too much. If you're prepared already ahead of the rest. Yeah, some people. Hey, how you doing? Good. Stand by. Here, I'll do my I'll do my card. It's like the highlight of my day. Nope.
Yeah, everything except for the bay leaves, but I think I'll live without those. <laughs> So everything seems to be back on the shelves except for like the eggs. Yeah. Huh? Eggs and some of the uh, tissue. Oh, the toilet paper. Yeah. 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 So well, I'm, I'm sure people have coffee filters and like old magazines at their house. They'll be able to make it through. <laughs> to see people seem like they've settled down a little bit too. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> no reason to panic. No. Just be like this guy and have good vibes. Can I show everybody on my live stream your shirt, man? <laughs> Check out his shirt. Good vibes right there. Yeah, all right. That's what's helping the Schumann residents uh, stay up. You know what that is? Schumann residents? It's like the, the resonation of the uh, vibes, basically, around the world. You should check that out since you're wearing that shirt. Schumann resonance. Yeah, you're probably part of it. Part of it. Thanks. Imagine that. Imagine that. Oops. So I, I saw a shirt that said, take it home with you. The guy made sure he wanted me to see. So maybe my cart's got some, some virus on it. I don't know, who knows. So you notice how I'm staying nice and calm and cool. I'm just kind of joking around with people and stuff like that, even though I know some of them are, are trying to give me a tough time, get in my way, send me, send me messages, uh, to try to keep me in fear, try to get me to panic, think I'm gonna get the coronavirus and all this different stuff. There's really, there's really no reason to react to any of it. Um, you know, sometimes these people do carry through on some of the threats that they, that they make. But um, it seems like the more you react to it, the more they do it. And these people are getting paid. There we go. A lot of these people, yeah, are getting paid or getting reimbursed through gift cards or whatever. However, they're reimbursed to be part of the Truman Show here. And uh, no reason to, to even give them the... Uh, give them the reaction. Give them the pleasure of uh, trying to bully you. Uh, DA, the district attorney, asks, do I ever... <laughs> Do I ever think of putting magnets in my hats? I don't do anything to shield or to counteract any of the shit that they do. I don't use a VPN. I still have a Gmail account. I bank at Chase, which is one of the, uh, the biggest global banking systems. I just, uh, I just go ahead and take the brunt of whatever they're gonna do to me because I know that there's people keeping track of what they're doing. And if I play their game and go ahead. If I play their game and shuffle around and switch all my accounts, buy all these different products uh, for shielding, uh, for protecting my internet location and all that stuff, I'm just playing their game and I'm not going to do it. Don't look at me like that. Uh, just not gonna do it. 
So the more that they attack me, the more proof there is of that happening. And in the long run, it'll all work out. If it doesn't, then, then that's what I spent my life doing is uh, doing my own thing, fighting these people. That was interesting that John's wife had a dream about my dog being poisoned because I'm almost positive it happened a few days ago, four days ago, when I, I sold a hat in my store. Almost nothing is selling in my store. Almost nothing at all. I think I did like 20 bucks yesterday, 30 the day before. Just each day it keeps on the graph. The graph just gets lower and lower and lower and lower. Uh, but one of the hats that sold was a, a hat, uh, the name of the business was Parvo's Paints. So it was like a paint company. Benjamin Moore, uh, contractor. And I, that was like one of the, one of maybe three hats sold that day. At night, my dog wakes up in the middle of the night, pukes all over my bed, starts hacking and coughing, and hacked and coughed for about three days. So that was, Right after, I, he's usually always with me. He's either in the, you guys see, he's not in the truck with me right now, he's at home with my daughter. Um, but he's always either in the truck with me or at home with me. I even take him like when I go out and run errands, I go to the bank, go to pay my rent, go to the post office, I take him with me. I just leave him in the truck for a little bit, make the windows down and stuff like that. But that day, I had to leave him at home. Go to the grocery store for about an hour, come home, Parvo Paints hat sold. That night, he starts puking all over the place. What are the odds? You know, if, if that if that was just something that happened recently, I'd be like, wow, that's really coincidental. Huh. Chalk it up as coincidence. But when it's happened continuously, day after day after day after day, um, that I have been aware of for almost three years now, not a coincidence how many how many coincidences does it take before it's mathematically possible you know to be a coincidence so. I see a lot of people out riding their bikes, out running and walking. That's good. Now, oh, John asked the neighborhood that I live in that everybody's like, oh, you should be so thankful to live there. Well, you can live in a mansion and be surrounded by a bunch of jerks and uh, not have any contact with your neighbors. And it's miserable. Well, contact, you have contact, but it's all negative. Um, so, you know, living in a big house, I don't own this house. I'm stuck here. I don't want to pay the rent here anymore. I have 14 more months before I can even leave. Uh, so this is Glenhurst, Avondale, Arizona. When I moved here, you could buy one of these houses for around $150,000, under $200,000. Uh, somebody, that's a good question. Somebody asked me, how many people do I see wearing masks? I've only seen, maybe since this whole thing started, maybe at the most 10 people since this whole thing started. There was one lady at the store that had a mask on today. Uh, but uh, it's very rare that I see anybody with a mask on around here.
going to check a couple of these messages and then I'm going to go in and make my turkey. I'm going to wash my hands actually first, just in case. Uh, somebody said Glenn, Be Glenn Beck Radio Show has many uh, military journalists on. Maybe team up with him to be independent journalists. That's a good idea. I should probably message him. But that being said, most journalists, even if they are on a conservative show, if they've made it, I don't think Glenn Beck would let me talk about what I'm talking about on his show here. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe I'll just go ahead and message him. You never know until you try, right? Uh, Jules T.I. said, I believe this program gives you a false dream. Yeah, it's a... Um, uh, they use artificial intelligence that brings in the information from remote neural monitoring and from observation, constant 24-hour observation uh, through your phone, through your your internet searches, through your uh, emails, basically all of your interactions. And they insert a lot of the non-organic events into your life uh, that you they basically give you a narrative of your own life. really tough to explain. Uh, somebody asked if I can buy out my contract as uh, a ban on evictions through... No, no because I'm, I'm on probation, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time. I got arrested on January 4th of 2018 and ended up with a class 6 felony for um, not disturbing the peace. I forget what it, what they even charged me with now or what they uh, convict me of. Uh, anyway, I'm on two years of probation. And when you're on probation, you can't just... Uh, move. If you leave the state, you're considered a, a, a fugitive. I put in that request. It's called an uh, interstate transfer, I believe. Request. You have to pay $300 to request a move. That doesn't even guarantee you the, uh, the opportunity. It d doesn't guarantee you that they're going to accept it. The probation department or in my case, which is weird because um, I've never been in prison. It would be the parole department. I guess it's just the uh, the area, maybe the parole department um, multitasks, and they take care of probation too. I don't know. But um, they would have to accept me moving there. And if they looked me up and learned about what I talk about, how I'm basically a dissident, government dissident, which I'm not. I'm not anti-government. I'm just anti-corrupt government. But when you go out uh, against corrupt government, then uh, they don't they don't like that. They don't want you to uncover their uh, their crimes, and then they use all of the powers that they have to make you look like a criminal. Uh, somebody somebody said to read a book by so-and-so. You know, I really haven't been researching, reading too much lately. i figured out just about everything that I want to figure out right now. I'm to the point where I'm just going to relax as much as possible during this break, this shutdown. I'm going to get as much rest as possible. Still gonna tweet, still gonna put out information, still gonna keep doing some YouTube videos. Uh, but right now I'm just kind of waiting. 
I've spent every single day for a few years now fighting this in court, going on radio talk shows, networking, uh, fighting through the targeting, and uh, I'm just tired, worn out, and uh, have they eased up on me? Eh, compared to when it first started, yeah. Um, when I film, it slows down. When I've got my camera off, I've got people yelling at me, waving hatchets and stuff like that. Oh, you guys trying to go? No. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll see you all later. I'm going to go make a turkey. I'll let you know how it turns out. Have a good day.